bendiga, Dios les bendiga mis hermanitos Estamos aquí esperando que se vayan conectando Aquí ya tenemos a Jasmine Tenemos a A Beatriz Supone que son los nenes que están ahí Entrando Así que Estamos este Jasmine está por ahí. Jasmine está aquí. Estamos dando unos minutitos para que se vayan conectando los hermanos. Dios les bendiga, mis hermanos. Por ahí vemos a Jessica. Dios te bendiga, Jessica. ¿Quién está por aquí? Vamos a ver por aquí. Este, tenemos a Jessica La Colón Tenemos aquí a Jessica Jasmine María Dios me los bendiga Por aquí vamos a darle Un poquito más de tiempo Para que se vayan conectando los hermanos En esta hora Amén Amén Quiero darle un par de minutitos para que se vayan conectando los hermanos. We're going to give a couple more minutes so we can. We're literally waiting for our brothers and sisters to come in. And yes, Jessica, I look tan, but it's because of work. <laughs> yeah, I had a good vacation. It was also because of vacation. We did a lot of swimming. We did a lot, you know, a lot of time. Spent time with my parents. But I'm glad to be happy. I'm glad to be back. We're happy to be back. So, let me see who's all. Te bendiga, Francesca. Daniel Valentín. Dios te bendiga, Daniel Valentín. Uh -huh. Quiero darle unos minutitos. Ya, ya mismo empezamos. Vamos a empezar a las... A las 5, a las 5, a las 5, a 6 o 5, we're going to start our class. So, do me a favor. If you see that, you know, all those youth that are not here, can you just message them? Link them as a, as a Facebook message. Okay, amen. So, we're going to, Angélica, Dios te bendiga, Angélica, hermano, que eso solo, Jasmine, Dios te bendiga. Dios te bendiga, Maika. Ahí está su líder, mis hermanos. Dios la bendiga. Ok, todo el mundo que está entrando, por favor, a los jóvenes y a los líderes de jóvenes que están entrando, mándenle la clase a los jóvenes por Messenger. Amén. Dios me los bendiga. Ok. Angélica, Maika, vamos a hacer unos waves por aquí. Para que nadie se sienta por aquí. Y la Colón, no la conozco. Dios le bendiga. Vamos por aquí. Ok. Dios le bendiga, mis hermanos. Este, vamos a empezar a las 6 y 5. 6 y 5 vamos a empezar con este estudio. We're going to be starting around 6.05 with this study with tonight. We're going to be studying about racism and xenophobia, seeds of hatred. I had to look that word up. I didn't know what xenophobia was. No tenía idea de lo que era. Six, un minutito más. Un, minut, un minutito más. Vamos a empezar la clase. Carlos Valentín, Dios te bendiga, mi hermano. Espero que si los jóvenes están ahí, esto es una clase para jóvenes. Es el caso de youth, pero los adultos pueden, por favor, si, si quieren escuchar, pueden escuchar la clase. Solamente le voy a pedir un, un, un favor a los adultos. Este, los comentarios, si van a escribir, este, me gustaría más que los jóvenes... Dios te bendiga, Orion y, y, y Galaxia. Happy to see you guys. 
si los adultos, por favor, los comentarios, por favor, quiero, me gustaría que los jóvenes fueran los que comentaran y, este, y no me gustaría que se sientan cohibidos los jóvenes de compartir y de participar en esta clase y que como tal es para ellos. Amén. Están bienvenidos a entrar, están bienvenidos a, a estar aquí, a escuchar. Amén. Pero quiero los jóvenes, los jóvenes que estén, que estén en esta clase, este, que sean los que, si, por favor, comenten. Porque yo sé que, que de una manera u otra, este, este tema los va a tocar y de una manera u otra este tema se, se, se van a identificar con el tema de esta noche. Así que Dios los bendiga. Son las 6 y 5, como dije. Este, por favor, veo que Alan no está. Por favor, si, si pueden, le pueden conectar, le enviarle un mensaje. Veo que otros jóvenes no están todavía disponibles, no están entrando aquí. Dayana Caraballo, Dios me los bendiga a nuestros hermanos de allí, de Raíz de David, nuestra este, la, la hija de nosotros aquí, de la León de la Tribu de Judá. Pues Dios me los bendiga, mis hermanos. Nuevamente, vamos a darle comienzo a esta clase. Este, vamos a darle comienzo a esta clase. Así que vamos a empezar con una oración. Padre bueno, Padre amado, Dios de misericordia, te damos la gracia, Señor, la gloria y la honra por este día, por la oportunidad que tenemos, mi Dios Santo, Señor, mi Dios, de poder entrar en tu palabra. Ahora, Espíritu Santo, yo te pido, mi Dios, que tú nos guíes a través de este estudio, que seas tú, mi Dios Santo, que traiga iluminación, mi Dios Santo, y revelación de tu palabra, mi Dios Santo, a nuestras mentes, a nuestros corazones, Padre. Mira a los jóvenes, mi Dios Santo, los adultos también que están, van a ser partícipes, Padre, de esta palabra, mi Dios Santo, que se puedan identificar, mi Dios Santo, y que salgamos, mi Dios Santo, edificados y, cono y conociendo más, mi Dios Santo, Señor, mi Dios, de tu palabra en este momento, Señor, mi Dios. Te lo pedimos, Señor, en el nombre de Jesús. Amén y amén. Ok, so, we're going to take things a little bit slow. I would like, we're going to go through a couple of uh, Bible verses. It's not going to be just one Bible verse. It's going to be a couple of Bible verses. So the first one, I would like you to, I remember, I put a, a message in the WhatsApp app that I would like All the youth to have pen and paper and their Bible. Because this is a Bible study. I'm not going to be preaching to you guys. I'm going to be teaching you going through the Bible. So I need everybody. So in the meantime, if you don't have it, parents are next to you. Parents can go get it. But I need you guys to get a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And what we're getting that. What we're getting that. We would like you guys to go to John chapter 4 verse 9. John chapter 4 verse 9. And I'm only going to read this one scripture because this the uh, the lesson jumps from um, verse to verse, chapter to chapter. So we're not going to be running throughout the whole, um, you know, I'm going to be waiting. I don't want you guys to get backed up. So what I want you to do is I want you to guys to start writing down. The Bible verses. I want you to guys start writing down the keywords and the stuff that I'm going to be giving you, so you guys can go back once we're done and just do like a quick review and just you know as as you go along with everything that's going on right now, it's going to make it's going to impact your life and it's going to make, it's going to be it's going to make everything it's going to make a lot of sense. All right. So tonight we're going to be starting about racism, xenophobia. Xenophobia, seeds of hatred. Now, xenophobia, I had no idea what this word is. I was like, what is this word, xenophobia? I know what racism is, but xenophobia literally is the same thing. It's being prejudged. It's uh, having something against somebody else because of their culture. Okay? And that's a key word, key word in today's lesson. So, let's go to the first scripture of the word. Amen? We're going to be in John chapter 4, verse 9. So, John chapter 4 verse 9 The word says In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit Then the woman of Samaria said to him How is it that you being a Jew Ask a drink from me 
a Samaritan woman, for Jews have no dealing with Samaritans. For Jew had no dealings with Samaritans. Okay, let me explain to you. Let's go ahead. I want to explain something to you guys real quick about why it this Bible verse, especially this situation, was is important in today's lesson. First of all, let's talk a little bit about Jesus. But before we talk about Jesus, I want to open up with a little introduction. And it really caught my eye because when I was reading the introduction, it really said that a little boy came home from school and he told my mom, Mom, I made a new friend today. I made a new friend. I want him to come over and play. And the mom said, she didn't ask him for his name. She just said, what color is he? And the boy said, you know what? I don't know. I'll check tomorrow. So what I'm saying is, what I'm, what I'm seeing in this, the story is how the kid made a new friend. And even though he made a friend, he didn't even know what color he was. So that's what we want to talk about racism today. Racism today is a big topic. And we're going to go through the Bible study. We're going to go through the Bible to see how we're as Christians are supposed to act. And how is the world in the original form created by God was supposed to act. Racism and xenophobia, seeds of hatred. So as we see here, we read in the first scripture, we see... In John chapter 4, verse 9, we've seen how the woman of Samaritan, the Samaritan woman, the Samaritan woman, how she asked she asked Jesus, How are you how, how are you being a Jew asking me, a Samaritan woman, for water? And then he says, Because they didn't dwell, that means they didn't get along. Samaritans and Jews did not get along. And this is why they don't get along. Now let's go back to the Old Testament. We're going to go back to the Old to the Old Testament and we're going to go think back to Babylonia. We're going to think back. We're going to go all the way back to Daniel. Right before Daniel, Jer Jerusalem, Israel, they were in a they were in a good in a good time, in a good place. Israel got invaded Israel got taken over by Babylonian and taken to Assyria. Now, the people that were taken to Assyria that were literally, whether they were taken by slaves or they were taken um, to do work over there, like Daniel was taken as a slave, his friends were taken as a slave, but also all the people were taken to Samaria. So while there, the Jews got involved. They got, they made, they married women from Samaria, women from Babylonia. So now, after 70 years, after 70 years, how we see how with this connection, how this, um, literally the kids that they had. The Jews with the Samaritan women came to be the Samaritans. Now, they didn't like them. They didn't get along with them because, number one, when they were able to go back to Israel, they had to leave their families. They couldn't bring them because God told them that they couldn't get, they couldn't marry outside they couldn't marry outside of being a Jew. Now, that might seem like a racist thing. That might seem like God was telling them not to not to get along with other people. But we're going to see how we see in God's plan why he said a lot of things to the Jews for him for them not to do it. So now as we come along we see how these Samaritan women and the Samaritans and the Jews didn't get along. In fact, in order for them to travel, they would rather go a, a, a further away. They would rather go around and take a longer path 
than to go to Samaria because they didn't want to encounter them. They, they disliked them that much. They disliked them that much. They didn't want to be near them because they seen them as half-breeds. They seen them as, like, like we said, um, as washed down. They missed as mixed. They didn't like how they were part of them, but at the same time, they knew that literally Samarians came out of sin because they weren't supposed to do that. So now we see... Now, we see Jesus here asking this Samaritan woman for water, and she, she gets surprised. She's like, well, you know, why are you asking me for water when nobody would talk to me, especially a Jew? They wouldn't talk to her because she had a reputation. She had, then she said that, it said that she went to get water around the ninth hour, which was around noon, and nobody got water at that time. But she went because she knew there wasn't going to be anybody there, because she already had She only had um, she, like the, um, he said that she had six husbands, and the one that she had wasn't hers. So she only had a reputation, and God knew that Jesus did that. That's what she said. You know, now you being a Jew, you talking to me. So now we see the number one point we're gonna talk about. We're gonna talk about how Jesus overcomes radical prejudice. Pre-justice, prejuicio, pre-justice, what is that? That's when we literally, okay, I'm having some problem here, guys. It says, um, we seen here that, I guess we're having a little bit of problem with, uh, can you guys hear me? It doesn't, it doesn't seem right. Let me see. Let me do something real quick here. Hopefully this will work out. All right, guys, we have some technical difficulties. Hopefully, this helped out. If it did, give me a thumbs up, okay? Now, Jasmine said that with certain cultures, they didn't want to mix. Somehow, we shouldn't mix with the things of the world. This is different. It's very different because we're not supposed to think from the world, but that's what Jesus came. Jesus came to break that. That's what I'm talking about. How Jesus came to overcome radical prejustice. And sometimes we practice that. Thank you, Angelica. Sometimes we practice that. And that is something that we need to be very careful how we don't mix ourselves with the with the things of the world. But we have to deal with people from the world. So in that way, that's what this lesson is about, Jasmine. And thank you that you brought that point up. Because because of um that's what jesus came to give us a lesson about how we shouldn't just because somebody's a sinner doesn't mean we can't deal with them he's telling you this is a big okay this is what really is telling us about we can't talk to people from the world we can't deal with people from the world we just can't practice the same things that the people from the world are experiencing. We can't practice the same thing because then we will be in two waters and we can't practice that. So now it comes, Jesus overcame radical prejustice. So while everybody was literally pointing the finger at this woman, Jesus came. And let me tell you something. Out of this picture, this is the reason why the, the people from Judea consider them impure and lower social class and treated them contemptuously that means that they, they, they didn't want to mess with them now Jesus came and he was willing to talk to this woman and this is what I like about I'm in the area of evangelism but now here we go he comes Jesus talk to this woman that nobody will talk to talk to this woman that the world didn't want to do anything with talk to the Samaritan woman and this woman came and I'm evangelized she talked about Jesus she went and talked to him and said, listen, I found the Messiah. He's over here. He has told me everything. A prophet, he told me everything. And he stayed there for three days. And that's the greatness about, about how Jesus works. <laughs> All right, Jasmine. Jasmine says that she meant it in marriage. How we came exactly. This is what happens. A lot of times... We fall in love or we start liking a person that's from the world. 
and we think we're going to be able to bring them to Jesus. You know what? Let Jesus bring people. You know, all we knew, all we can do as human beings is show people the way to Jesus. But they need to walk on Jesus. If they don't want to walk on Jesus, they're just going to bring you down. We've seen it a lot of times. Eventually, the person who doesn't want to walk, is going to, the other person is going to get tired. It's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. A, full, a person that's devoted to Christ, committing themselves, Commit them themselves. That's okay, Jasmine. It doesn't even in the class. Commit them themselves to another person that's not from that's not from that's not following Christ. Another Christian is just gonna consume it. It's not gonna work. One of the two is gonna give up. One of the two is gonna break him up. The only one, the only one that can bring them to Jesus is when is when we open our heart and we confess our sins. And after we confess it, we have. The conviction says we gives us the Holy Spirit gives us the conviction of sin. So going back, going back to the theme which is about racism. So now we see how how the woman and Jesus how how they got in this conversation, and really Jesus wasn't even talk, supposed to talk to her because of the racism because they didn't dislike him because because literally they came out of sin. Now, I like it because it's just that um, Jesus overcame radical prejustice. That means they were already, they were already prejusting it. They were already saying um, the word I'm looking for. Here it is. Stereotype. Stereotype. So in other words, here we have the Jews. They're already stereotyping all the Samaritans. They were all bad. They couldn't do anything. Amen. Now, that was in John chapter 4, verse 9. Can you guys write it down? And write down right there. I want you to write down John chapter 4, verse 9. Samaritan woman. And I want you to put right there how I want you to put the words prejudgment. Okay. And I also want you to write down. All right. Write down where the Samaritans came from. And you're going to find that in the book of Daniel. Right, you're gonna see all that. Now, now we're gonna jump to another verse. We're gonna jump to um, go to Acts. Go to Act chapter. We're gonna go to chat. We're gonna go Act chapter chapter ten, verse thirty-four and thirty-five. Okay, John. Chapter Acts, I mean Acts chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. Verse 34 and 35. And he reads. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jessica. He says, Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, I truly. I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. All right, sorry about that. I have some, it shouldn't freeze anymore. I should be good now. Don't go anywhere, okay? Don't go anywhere. All right, let's go back. Acts chapter 34, chapter 10, verse 34 and 35. Now we see Peter with his man Cornelius. Now, why? Hey, we're alive. We are alive. <laughs> Peter and Cornelius, what happened? Here we have how we know that the law came first to the Jews. And it was for, the, for these Israelites. Now here we have Peter as an Israelite who thought that the grace also came only for the Israelites. And this is a thought that, that was in the mind, is in the corrupted mind. It was a corrupted thought that came to the corrupted mind as a tradition that it came down as um as something that just came into themselves. Amen. So now we see Peter and who's Cornelius? Cornelius is a Roman. Cornelius is but is a Roman that accepted Jesus. Now, here we have that in this vision, 
chapter 10, he, um, Peter starts to have this dreams. Now he's dreaming and like a roll opens up and there's tons of food. But what happened, they're having snakes, they're having scorpions, they're having all these other things. And he says, you know what? He told God in the dream, I'm not eating that. And God told him, eat it. He goes, I'm not going to eat that. That's impure. I can't eat that. And they keep telling him. And then God told him again, eat it. He goes, I'm not going to eat that. That is impure. He goes, don't call impure what I have already sanctified. Don't call all pure what I already have cleaned up. And he didn't, he didn't understand what he was having this dream. But then two men came to him right after he woke up and took him to Cornelius. And then while he was with Cornelius, he seen how Cornelius was a follower, how he was doing services in the house. And also how Cornelius received the Holy Spirit. And that's when he understood, you know what, to God, there is no, there is no, um, no asesión de persona, whereas God, there is no, for him, the, everybody's the same. The word says here that for God shows no partiality. That means th there's no partiality. And you can find this, write this down next to that. I said, Acts 10, 34 to 35, but the whole chapter 10. The whole chapter 10 of Acts is all for Cornelius, how Cor about Cornelius' conversion, and also about a teaching to Paul, to, I mean to Peter. Because not only did Peter was taught there, he was also being taught, later on I'm going to tell you how, how even Paul coming along, because he was doing this, he was being a little bit of a hypocrite with the, um, with the Gentiles. But I, was, I will explain that later on. So here we have how Peter and Cornelius in chapter Acts chapter 10, and we're going to go back to the Deuteronomies. Deuteronomy chapter 10 verse 17 speaks about how God has no partiality, how God is one God for the everybody. Why? Because we were all created equal. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit about, how, <coughs> how, how we were all created equal. And we're going to jump into, write down Acts Chapter 17, verse 26. Now, we talked about Jesus and the Samaritan woman. We talked about Peter and Cornelius. Now, we're going to talk about Paul. Why so important about Paul? Because Paul, he was the, he literally was the one tool that God used to take grace, to take Jesus, to take, take literally salvation to the Gentiles. Because apparently salvation was only... Even though when God created the law, when God created created salvation, it was for everybody. But the Jews took it all down to themselves. Like, we're the only ones that are being saved. And they took this as a pride. But also, this pride not only gave them pride. They thought they were better than everybody because they had the true God. And they want to share that God with anybody else. So here we have how Paul is taking the salvation to other people. To the Gentiles. Amen. And Paul talks about. In um, Acts chapter. Deuteronomy 10.17. Thank you. Now Deuteronomy 10.17. You know link that. You're going to write it down. Next to Acts chapter 10. 34 and 35. But remember chapter 10 of Acts. Is all about Cornelius and Jesus. And and um, Peter, how God literally was working with Peter because he was prejudging. Thank No, 36. But still, though, that's good. Acts chapter... Okay, now we're going to Acts chapter 17. In Acts chapter 17, verse 26, we see Paul. Now, Paul is telling... I'm going to write it. I'm going to read it here. Acts 26, 17, 26 says, And he was made from one blood, every nation of men, to dwell on all the face of the earth, and has determined their pre-pointed times and the boundaries of their dwelling. 27. So that they should seek the Lord and the and in seek the Lord in the hope 
that they might grope for him and find him through he is not far from each of us. Amen. So here we see Acts chapter 26. What happens? Paul reaches, re, reaches the city of Athens. At the city of Athens, these people of Athens, what they, they seek, what they like was new wisdom. Literally new religion. New gods. But before that, Paul had already had that vision. And, and, and the vision that God showed him was this town full of idols everywhere and we and he understood that it was Athens when he got to Athens driven by the spirit driven by the Holy Spirit he gets to Athens and he starts to walk around but he sees one he sees he sees a poetry like a, a place to worship because they were worshiping all over all the gods but there was one that there was nothing but there was the words he was to worship to the God who we do not know. And that was the door. Last week on Wednesday, I had the opportunity to um, literally bring a class, literally preach about the doors that we can use to testify. And that was the door that even though these people wanted more knowledge, but they, they were idolizing all these other gods, but this was the door that Paul used to let them understand we're going to see this in verse 27 that he, in verse 27 that he said that he is not far from each of us in other words he let them know you adore all these idols you adore all these gods but I came to tell you I come to tell you there's only one God and that was the door and everybody started, everybody started listening to him but remember what Paul had, he had the scriptures, he had the Holy Spirit guiding him. So right there, he had the main, he just, all he had to do was catch their attention. He caught their attention. Right there, that was the door. Huh? Verse 17, Acts chapter 17, verse 23 said, To the God we do not know. And that was the door that Paul used in order to, being able to preach to them to let them know that salvation was for everybody that you don't need to now all these other gods are literally false God because I want to talk to you about the real God the God that created you and the God that died for you so you can have a better life so you can have eternal life and that's what Paul did in this in this scripture and we see in this door now write it down I want you to write down we already wrote down we already went through John chapter 4 verse 9 about the Samaritan women and how, God, how Jesus broke down that wall. Now we're talking about, then we talked about um, Acts chapter 10, 34 and 35, how Jesus came and also broke that down. Now we're talking about Acts chapter 17, 26, and 27. Paul in um, Athens, and he came to uh, reconciliate, reconciliate all men. Now we see how salvation was for all men. And that's what we want to talk about. Even though today we're talking about racism. And the word that I can't really spell, I have to read it all the time, Signophobia, Signophobia, which is literally prejudgment, having something against other people because of their culture. And when we talk about, and then I want to come in, and we, let's talk about a little bit about racism, about the Signophobia. And the word that I like here, it's how we... A lot of the times, it says that all human beings are equal. Science has proved that. Scientifically, human humanity is a single race. By science, 
human, humanity is a single single race. Although there are different ethics, nationalities, and cultures in the world, all human beings are genetically identical. Within the human race, there are great diversity of skin color and other physical characters. All humans were made in the image of God. We're going to see that in Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 and 27. What does God say? He says, let's make, let's make man to our image. So literally all men are created equal. Even I think that's in the dollar, right? But all men are created equal. And science, eventually science is is proves that. That all men are a single race. What devices is the culture, literally our thoughts and our and our and our color. That's literally what devices. And then sometimes a lot of times where even those cultures have their religion, what they believe in. But here we see how number one, Jesus came to break that up, that to the point that Peter even thought about it. And then we see how Paul also came and he's teaching the atheists on how Salma. Oh, we praise to Jesus on how Paul came to atheists and started talking to all the perfect example of a lot of gods. But he came to teach them about the only God and how he offered them salvation. Amen. All right, guys. So now that we've gone through John, we've gone through Acts 26. And remember. Acts 17 verse 23 was the door that Paul used to being able to preach about God. I'm saying this because you can also see yourself here, guys, looking for those doors that you can actually preach God. And just the best way to preach Him is just tell Him what He's done in your life and what the Bible scriptures and the opportunity that everybody has also to accept Jesus in our lives. Amen? So, and I like this because it says, now look at this. We're going to Acts chapter 24. I mean, seven. I'm, I'm sorry. Chapter 17. We're going to be in 17. Look what number 24 says. I mean, number 24, 26. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. At the end, he says, he has made from one blood every nation of man. Let me read it. Right there. 26. He has made from one blood every nation of man. What does this mean? What does it mean from one blood? Remember back? Now, listen. I'm going to read it again. Jessica, write it right there. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. He has made from one blood every nation of man. Now, remember... When Jesus was in the Last Supper, and He said that we have, we're going to do a new covenant, a new covenant. He said, "This is my blood, the blood that He shed." When He shed the blood, when He drew the blood, when He He shed the blood for our sins. Now in Christ, we're one nation. In Christ. Where there's no division. And if you go back. my One of my favorite passages is John chapter 17. That talks about is Jesus praying. And thank you Jessica. And Jesus is praying. And he's saying. Lord. He's praying. And he's asking the father. For the disciples. He says can they. I pray that they can be one as me and you are one. They were one also, not only one, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one. And because we have Jesus in our heart, we're also one. So now we're seeing how this verse is chapter 17, verse 26, how he's made from one blood every nation of men. So every nation comes together as one because now every nation is one nation within God. Amen. And I'll, and you know what, guys? I want to say this, there is no coincidence why this topic came now 
when thank you Jessica how this topic came now when this whole thing of black lives matter and I want to talk a little bit about that but I'm going to talk about it at that like keep that in thought because I'm going to talk about that towards the end but before that remember how I spoke about how earlier how Paul rebuked literally you know Paul brought um Peter attention and we're gonna find that in um I believe it's Galatians chapter two and what literally what is what was going on it was that there we seen he told he said he told he told Peter he said Peter here I'm I'm noticing that um I was in Antioch, Antioch. I'm noticing that when we're with the Gentiles, you sit down and you you sit down and you um talk to them and you do all this you know all these other things. But as soon as the Jews come, you get up and you leave. And he told them that's that's hypocrisy. You can't do that because then not only you. Is the one not only you're the only one doing it, but also um, Bernabe was doing it, and the other Jews were literally doing that. So what was going on is that if it was Peter, if it was Peter with the Gentiles, he would be fine. But as soon as they walked in, he would feel embarrassed. He would we would be thinking of what they're gonna say because he was hanging out with the Gentiles. So that means that I don't want to bring that. Reflection now, where he says that um that it's a question here that I like. He says he says can a can a true Christian born again can he practice racism? I don't know as far as practicing racism, but as far as their Customs and habits that we have that Jesus came to break with that, and we see a Paul, we seen a Peter doing miracles, we seen a Peter preaching the word, but at the same time, we seen a Peter, he's human. Remember, we're all human and we're all learning. And now we see Peter still had things inside of him from his Jews' customs, and that's what that's why Paul hit so hard on the law because. Because the law, they, they misunderstood the law. They drove away from the law. But now, that's why we needed grace. Literally what law was, literally what the law was, and when the Jews were supposed to, listen to this. God selected the people of Israel with the intention that they could minister to the other nations. They're his truth. And in I instead of doing that they became um orgulloso they they had you know and they became prideful in their position and they would um not listen they didn't want to deal with the uh gentiles you understand i'm going to read that again Remember how we said what was the law about? Why in the beginning I said that they misunderstood and they drove away from the purpose of the law? Remember how we said that? Why? That's why God. This is what God did. God, first of all, God gave us what? When he created us. When he created us, God gave us. Give me a second, guys, real quick. Sorry guys I had a little situation It happens So Going back If we see When we see That the things that the law 
All the things that God gave to the people of Israel, it was literally so they could minister. So they could minister to the other nations around them of what was of what about his truth. So he could teach them. So they could teach them of, of the true God. So he could teach them about the ways of la, lo que la santidad, of being holy. But they took that in a different way. They took that in a way, like he says here, prideful. But it's okay to be prideful, pero es al de espíritu. Se orgullecieron. So now, here, but that wasn't why God didn't want, God did he said, listen, you're going to be around these people, but you're going to be an example. The problem is that they weren't being an example to them. They were following what the other people were doing. That's the problem. That's the problem they had the whole time throughout the, you know, if you go back to the book of Judges, if you go back to the, to that, to all the other books, how even though they came from Egypt, he gave us also our conscience would tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong. And that's what they were supposed to follow. They were supposed to follow what the Israelites were literally were supposed to be an example of how to be literally what we're supposed to be. How to be Christians. There was supposed to be a testimony. It was to be of you know of the true God and the things that the true God could do and how we were supposed to live. But instead, they brought it into their head. He went up to their head and said, You know what? We serve the better God. We serve we serve the true God. Your gods, they don't matter. We have the true God. And then he wanna deal with the Gentiles. And we see that in Peter twice. First, even God had to show them, he had to take them to the corner and say, I'm gonna now he says. Peter had that Jew mentality. He said, you know what? I'm going to take you to this man, to a faithful servant. And he was amazed. And he and, and I like the word that he said. He said, he says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. He understood that the, Jesus, the God we serve is for everybody. Amen. So, I'm going to start wrapping this up a little bit, guys. So, here tonight, we gave, I gave you examples. And I'm going to read here Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10 says, and I like this. Romans chapter 10 verse 12. Write it down, Jessica. Help me out. He says, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who come upon him. For whoever calls on his name of the Lord shall be saved. So now what I was talking about that Paul has said to the atheists. How, what Paul has said that he brought this salvation for everybody. Now Romans He's saying it again. He's saying it. There is no distinction between Jew and Greek. For the Lord, for the same Lord over all his riches to all who come upon his name. Number 13. For whoever calls on his name, the name of the Lord shall be saved. So salvation is for everybody. So, remember how I was talking about how now we're seeing more division than anything. How now we're seeing more, um, you know, Black Lives Matter, White Lives Matter. You know, how we're seeing throughout the time. This is the first time, guys. Throughout the whole time, we've seen prejudgment and xenophobia. Hitler was one of them. Hitler thought, and this movement came up of how... Uh, we're gonna kill. They wanted to kill the Jews, but not only the Jews. They wanted to kill everybody who didn't, 
who didn't um seem like a, like a German. They want to eliminate, especially the Jews. Now we also see this um white supremacy, you know, standing up. But this is the thing about when I talk about racism, guys. And I and I need you to pay close attention. We're not from this world. So remember how we talked about not getting involved in these things of this world? We can be in it. When we start taking sides, when we start pointing fingers at black and white. And this I hadn't had a chance to talk about this, but I want to explain to this, especially to you guys. You probably seen how a lot of times we do racism and we do prejudgment against cops, against the police, against judge. And all we're doing, we're following. Because if we were acting like Jesus, if we're acting like the Jesus is inside of us, we would have mercy for the white cop that killed him. And we will have mercy for the black man to die. If we're acting like Christians, we could understand that that man also has mercy. But what we're doing, we're prejudging. I don't see any likes. And we need to understand this. If you have thought about this, if you have thought about, oh, these white men, you know what? They are good cops, they are bad cops. You know what? They are good cop, bad doctors, they are good doctors. They are bad judge, corrupt judge, they are good judges. Just like they are Christians who are not walking in the path. We need to make sure what kind of Christians are we. Are we doing what we're supposed to do? I like the post that I saw the other day on a, on um everybody took a knee. All these baseball players took a knee. Ta, ta, ta. They took a knee, but one didn't. And he said, "No." Nah. He says, "I'm a Christian. Therefore, I will not. I will not. I'm a Christian, and I cannot take a knee because that because he believed that all lives matter." And if he was taking a knee, he would be following those. And he wouldn't be speaking out on what he truly believes. And what do we truly believe? We believe that salvation is for every man. We believe that racism comes from a seed. The, the, the theme here says racism and xenophobia, seeds of hatred. But a lot more or I see racism and xenophobia literally not being the seed, but I see being the branch of hatred. I don't see racism and xenophobia as a seed of hatred. I see racism and xenophobia as a branch of hatred. Because now we start seeing, now we start seeing, guys, how we're, if we start to point out fingers, if we just start to point out, oh, you know what, this cup is bad, or, or you know what, we're being a part of it. And we cannot be a part of this, everything that's going around. Jesus came to make peace. He's a, el el príncipe de paz. He's the prince of peace, and we're supposed to have that peace. We're supposed to give this to us to everybody. Amen. Now, I want to conclude with this Bible verse. Jessica, write it down, and this is the Bible verse for us to memorize. Amen. He says. It's in John, if it's in first of John, just first of John, chapter 4, verse 20. First of John, chapter 4, verse 20. It says, For he who does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God whom he cannot see? So we say we love God, we say we love Jesus, and we don't see him. When we're looking at people's when we're, we're talk, we're looking at people. We're looking at their customs, their culture, how they're different from us, and how their color is different. And we can't love them because of their differences. We have to show them that love. Okay, so I want to leave that with you guys. I want to leave that as the last verse to memorize. Memorize that verse. Write all this down. I hope you guys have all this down. And go back. Before you go to bed tonight, guys, just go over it. Go over the, the Bible verses, and I'll you know inbox me. You guys, you guys have me inbox me, brother Nieves. I have this you know, I, or even not only on questions, but I want you to inbox me on thoughts that you that you liked, something that came up to you, 
If we can make this more than a class, a conversation between Christians. You know, I love you guys, and I treat you guys as my, you know, uh, as my brothers. I don't treat you as as youth. I treat you as someone who matters because you matter to God. So you have, you have to matter to me. I, you know, I have most respect for everybody, for you guys, and I love you so much. But we have to also show that love, and we have to. You know, think of ourselves and think if we're being, if we're do, doing racism, uh, we have to make sure that we don't have those seeds. We have to make sure we don't have those doubts, and we have to make sure that we don't have those customs. We don't, but we're not doing things because everybody else is doing it. We gotta do it because we believe in, in Jesus Christ, and we wanna please him. We wanna do what he says. Amen, guys. I love you. Okay. I don't know who has the class next week. I hope you enjoy the class. Um, it was kind of hard because I had some pages in Spanish, some in English. I had to bring all this together. And usually I do English first, and then I, I mean, I do Spanish first, and I put it into English. But this time I had to do it the other way around. So I do apologize if I confuse yourself a little bit. I hope I didn't. And if you have any questions, please, 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 you know, I'm here for you. Text me, inbox me. Again, so let me let's pray together because we're I have to log off because the adults are coming. So, dear Father God, I come to your presence, thanking you, Father God, for you because you have led us through this wonderful lesson, uh, this teaching, Father God, of how you want us to treat others, how our attitude has to be towards racism, and if we have that seed in our heart, Father God, I ask for you that we can be truthful to ourselves and to you, Father God. I ask for you that you bless every person that was here in this class. Thank you for Jasmine. I want to thank you for Bernardo, for Alan, for Jessica. And I hope every and everybody that was here. Thank you, Angelica. Everybody that was here, I, I thank you. I love you. And God, I pray for you that you bless all of them in a major way. In the name of Jesus, I, I ask for you, God. Amen. Love you guys. Hopefully see you this weekend.